he celebrated the World Day of Consecrated Life. But because we celebrated at the same time the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord, we did not give it much attention. That is why today I would like to say a few words about it. Let me begin by explaining a bit more what is meant when we talk about people who are living a consecrated life. In the first place, we do not only talk about priests. Those who are leading a consecrated life can also be nuns or religious brothers. And what most of them have in common is that they live in community and what practically all of them have in common is that they have consecrated themselves in a special way to Christ and his church by the so-called three vows. The first vow is the vow of poverty. Well, this does not necessarily mean that they are poor, rather that they have no private property. They share what they have. Together. Then there is the vow of chastity, to remain unmarried for the sake of God and his kingdom. And finally there is the vow of obedience, not only obedience to the bishop, but also to the international community and its superiors he or she belongs to. It is the vow to go obediently wherever our superiors send us to the work of God. Each religious congregation has also its own special character, its own more specific spirituality, because it has started from the spiritual vision of its founder or foundress and his or her particular style in following Jesus. For example, the Franciscans relate themselves to the spirituality of St. Francis. The Redemptorists are supposed to have a redemptive love, especially for sinners. The Carmelites are trying to encounter God like Eli Elias did. Gaia did on the Mount of Carmel, etc., etc. Now we can ask ourselves the question, what is the usefulness of such a religious life for our society? Well, it cannot be denied in the first place that the religious have often been doing wonderful things. For instance, in the areas of charity, hospitals, orphanages, care for the old people, for the sick people, for the outcasts, education, the Catholic school system, evangelization, going out to convert the pagans. But leaving all this aside, there is one major thing that has made them, the religious I mean, absolutely, in my opinion, essential. By their life of chastity, obedience and poverty, the religious have been standing in our society as witnesses for the absolute priority and importance of God. Graham Green once wrote a book about the priest, the whiskey priest he is called. He is a tragic man, not very holy, not very successful in his priestly ministry, and most of all lonely. Lonely because all his fellow priests are killed or expelled 
by an anti-Catholic government. And so he is practically the only priest left in the country. At last he himself is also caught by the police and shot at the marketplace of a small town. Nobody seems to notice. Nobody cares. Except for one person. That person is a doctor. Looking through the window of his office, he sees how the execution takes place. And all of a sudden, although he is not a Catholic himself, but some sort of free thinker, the doctor is caught by an overwhelming feeling of sadness and loss. What Graham Greene wants to say is that even a free thinker may have a certain understanding of the great, the great and irreplaceable dignity of the priestly and religious way of life. If the priest and the religious are not there anymore, something is lost. Because what are they standing for? Perhaps the free thinker would say that they stand for eternity or they stand for the highest moral values of our human society, love, truth, justice and so forth. We Catholics simply say they are men and women of God. Of course, all Christians are supposed to be men and women of God. But priests and religious should be standing for him in a very special and exclusive and unambiguous way. The whole life hangs on it. The whole profession, the whole way of think, living, their ideals and their thoughts, their words and their deeds are supposed to be centered on it. Alter Christus, they are sometimes called. Another Christ. Oh dear friends, pray. Pray for more religious vocations. Because I dare say, good religions, religious, are absolutely necessary for any healthy society, more necessary than top class scientists, well trained professionals, or powerful and capable political leaders. No doubt, these people are necessary too. But without the religious, in the long run, I'm sure people will begin to lose sight of God, the light of the world. And without God, as I say, the light is lost. And any human society, and I dare say the entire human race, will inevitably come to an end.